after you've tried for five minutes to figure out why your microphone ain't working, you look and you see the orange light that tells you your mics are muted. Lord, the joys of being a parent. And all they did was say, I was using the computer. Once again, welcome to the Watch for the Hook Business and Entrepreneur Podcast. It's Michael with Tatiana. And we especially are happy that y'all are with us on another Watch for the Hook Wednesdays. And always, you can come by www.watchfor4thehook.com to check out our latest apparel. Speaking of apparel, you know, we was we got uh, one of our latest prototypes in, hopefully being this week, well, well after you hear this recording, it'll be in. But our youngest daughter, Talia, came up to her mama one day and said, Mama, I want to be an academic weapon at school. No, I don't think she says she wants to be. She says that's what she is. Okay. She is an yeah. academic weapon at school. Yeah. Not an automatic weapon. <laughs> not those hurt and kill people. <laughs> those praying for those yeah, who yeah, are that type weird. of stuff. She says, as smart and as brilliant as I am, like I am an academic weapon, I'm going to tear their butts up. <laughs> He said, go forward. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of her thought process on things. She is the individual that, hey, look, she's not going to wait for you to give her her accolades. No, nah, she's going to make them up. <laughs> that's their generation. They make up shit as they go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, We appreciate y'all tuning in. So what we're going to talk about today is we've been experiencing and watching and seeing witnessing i went i don't even want to say experiencing or watching or seeing i want to say witnessing okay we'll be witnessing Ms. Uh, listen listen and when you say witnessing that means and most of the times a witness is typically somebody that just happened to be there you just saw what you saw I, they like there was no intent for you to see that, but you saw what you saw when you saw it, whether you wanted to see it or not. And then you were asked to repent mm-hmm. or no recall, recall. What, what you just yeah. saw. Some, <laughs> and sometimes the stuff uh, that we've been witnessing, if we were asked to recall what what we had witnessed, would probably been too much to recall. <laughs> so we well, started laughing already. Yeah. Basically, what we're talking about is, you know. You can't cram it all in at once. You shouldn't cram it all in. I ain't even going to say you shouldn't. I'm going to say it would probably be best not to try and cram it all in at once. Because you have to leave that opportunity there to cram it in. You have to leave the option there to cram it in. And you have to leave the choice there for that individual to decide whether or not they want to cram it in. And and, and, and to reiterate what she's saying. We're witnessing that people are having uh, maybe seminars or conventions or events, events, gatherings, gatherings, anything. The call to actions are many. Right, right. And so people say when they, they mean, what do you mean call to actions? It's come get knowledge, bring your perspective, talk, network, associate, get to know, bring a friend. Tell everybody, come as one, all ye. It's, it's like nine to ten things. Please when you get, bring us. I mean, and by the time you get to the original purpose of the thing, the concept, the attendee or attendees or maybe customers or patrons or vendors are confused in what they signed up for in the first place. You took the words out of my mouth, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to stop laughing, but it's so funny. Like, at what point in time does X amount of call to actions, CTAs, equate to whatever is being had being now so diluted and watered down that you start to question, you know, like, what am I doing here? I mean, it's to the point. It's some things can start off as business, uh, networking events, 
um, entrepreneur uh, gatherings. And we're talking about in our area, in yeah, our area. Yeah. This is where we're just going to stick. We're going to stick in apparel and business entrepreneur. Uh, maybe you had an event that started out with, hey, we're looking for vendors to bring out their merchandise. And then two weeks later, it's, hey, you want to know how to podcast? You want to know how to understanding the podcasting world? And also, if you want to understand the podcasting world, you can always hit that podcast money merch tab with us. Get a free 30-minute session with me and Ms. Parker. Not about just podcasting, but also about if you want to start out in the entrepreneurial right. world. And it's just giving you 30 minutes of our time to even help you understand how to even start going in the right direction. Or if you want to figure out, this may not be just that for me. Right. But at least it won't help you waste too much of your time or your money. Right. So I always hit that podcast money merch tab with that on free fall uh, for me and Miss Parker. Back to what we were talking about. We was talking about like, you can have so many things that whomever your target audience is, you've missed them. I mean, and at that point, is your audience really targeted? No, because if you just spray in the wall, <laughs> was the wall the target or was the area you was trying to paint? It was in a certain room. But it's like, I don't know, when you think of call to action, I, it, it should be so clear and concise, you know, what the CTA is. And honestly, what I constantly go back to is, I don't know if anyone else remembers this, but in grade school, you know, this was before kids um, had all the uh, electronic devices, right? You actually had to use pencil and paper and yeah. notebooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stuff. they had to take this spiral notebook. They had to write the you know, little note and try to sneak it around through class. And when if you got that note passed to you and it was for you to receive, the call to action was going to be to answer that question. Do you like me? Circle yes or no. Like, isn't that what it's, it's asking you to do something? Yeah, it's specific. So it's very specific. It was for you. It was a question from another individual. And there was a specific response they were looking for. And you were asked to do it. So either you circled yes or you circled no. You know, like, it's just that simple to me. Yeah. And I mean... It gets to the point, like even like for us, we're 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 in this these things that we do. We're in the business of podcasting. We're in the business of of apparel. We're in the business of real estate. It's a constant learning thing for us. So when we're talking and giving y'all these these tidbits and knowledge, it's because this is what we've seen and learned from. Yeah, absolutely, we, it's experience firsthand. We're talking about the people. We're the people that sat in these venues and. Two or three hours later, we was like, what the hell just happened? And we look at me like, huh? Like, what? That, that ain't what? Yeah. Exactly. Then we move. Exactly. And then we go from there. We're like, so. That, so that now what, gives you an experience that you can share. First like, thing. Like, that wasn't it. Uh -uh. That was a whole mess. And then, as we always talk, time is the most valuable thing. You can never get back. Right. Like, I done dedicated four, four five, six hours. Oh, seven days or whatever leading up to this stuff. And then you go through the event and you come back out and you're like, this was not it. Right, right. Something, you know, you were left essentially unfulfilled. Yeah, they thought they're going to kill them with this one. And <laughs> God damn it, we still alive. They're oh, still yeah. on the website. Yeah. Yeah, check out the Dreamers T. Watch for the hook.com. Come on through. But you know what I've noticed? Sometimes, um, as entrepreneurs, as, you know, business owners or what have you, right? Um, sometimes you'll constantly change your call to action because, A, it needs to be changed for it to be relevant, right? But then there are other times when the responses that you're receiving aren't necessarily the responses you're looking for, the responses you were wishing you would receive. Or like the amount of responses, right? That you were getting, you were actually receiving back or not receiving back. So you increase the call to action because you think that's going to be the band-aid. Exactly. And that's, that's not it. Like don't increase the call to actions. Focus the message. 
And the one thing is, and also like Ms. Parker saying, you got to evolve it. It's okay to use something for a while. Go to something else. Uh huh. Go to something else. Mm-hmm. Go to something else. Go to something else. Maybe eight months later, come back to that thing that you started off in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to start yeah. come to a content. Be even in those cases where you might be having a call to action snafu, right? A concept snafu, a clarity snafu. Sometimes you should probably just consider reaching out and asking for a different perspective. Like it's okay yes. to do that. That does not mean you are failing. That doesn't mean what you're trying to do isn't good, isn't right, won't work. Sometimes you need an outside opinion. Failure is needed. That's what also people need to understand. The fear to fail will also lead to the fear of even doing a damn thing. Yep. Most people who have successful businesses fail two to three times before that one hit. Right. And then even at that one hit, they tried two or three more and failed again. Yep. But that one that they hit still kept them going until the next one hit. Right, right. So failures are going to come. Nobody is a hundred a hundred, which means they was a thousand percent or a hundred percent. No. I, I I always make sure I, my wife understands. Hall of Fame three point shooters average thirty percent. She said, "That's it." I know, right? I was so <laughs> awful. Yeah, the ten is great. Shit, shit. She didn't get you in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I cracked myself up, and you know what? I verbalized that. You corrected me, right? You gave me the right information. That changed my whole perspective and outlook on things when it came to the games, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes that person you reach out to or ask their opinion, you know, they don't have to be in the same lane or field as you. Sometimes that's that um, outlier perspective that you need. That's the anomaly of an opinion that you need. But the problem is people, individuals, or I'm just going to say we as humans sometimes have a hard time pushing our ego aside. So instead of us trying to, my mind. <laughs> so instead of us trying to clean up, you know, a concept or a message, we say screw it. They ain't finna think I'm feeling so we increase the call to actions and you just muddle the shit up even more. Or their egos don't get checked at the door. They never ask opinions of those who could possibly give them some great insight. Yeah. And they just keep struggling alone. Keep trudging along through the mud. Thinking. Thinking. And I just, just totally interrupted you. Right, you keep it going. Thinking that nobody else is out here realizing that you're struggling like you're struggling. Nobody's dumb, okay? Everybody just ain't gonna call you bluff. Or call you out, period. Because honestly... That does not work. And that's honestly to a, a entrepreneur or a business person. It's okay to be called out privately. What's going on in this era of social media is businesses being called out publicly. Yeah. Now, you can call out a, a multi-billion dollar conglomerate. Typically because of something negative. Yeah. You ain't touching them. No. But if it's a mom and pop, that's gonna hurt them. And you go up there and you go to a social media account and you publicly trash them. Yeah, that's gonna that kind of hurts. I mean, it's not kind. It actually will hurt their business. But if you had a way to contact them behind the scenes, it's just and for me as a business owner, we have been contacted about things. Oh, and that's fine. But you sit up here and pretend that you want all of this feedback. Really? Do you want the feedback or do you want people to just go along with the show? And by show, I mean, instead of you cleaning up a concept or an in- informational tidbit, instead of you taking onus to that not being probably as proper as it should be, you will just increase the, tar- uh, the, the call to actions. Yeah, I mean, has our apparel been 1000% correct every time no that's a that's a no because nothing is perfect 
the imperfections we've had with our customers, mm-hmm. we have either resent them the no, product. So, so you mean we rectify? Yeah, rectify, okay, rectify okay. the issue by resending them the product, mm-hmm. no charge to them, mm-hmm. or sending them additional products, right? No charge, right, them, right, right, and with a note saying, you know, we apologize, we apologize, must you know, um. I can recall one thing, a uh, partner of mine, my guy Keith Davis, bought something from us. He bought a hoodie from us uh, about a year and a half ago. Shout out to Keith Davis, class 98, probably five. Thank you. He sent me a message. He said, hey, man, you might be the, uh, the, uh, the pocket. One, one pocket. Yeah, something the was, was off. I said, my bad, man. I said, because that's on uh, that's on me and, and us because I didn't check every pocket right. that came from our distributor. Exactly. You know, I checked some and then, you know, called it good. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Like, spot check. You spot yeah. check. In the real world, everybody yeah. spot check. It just check. happened to get that one. <laughs> so we resent them some stuff and he was like, cool, man, I appreciate it. No problem at all. And, you know, that's how you have to deal with things like that. In no, the business that's right. that's how a customer would like you to deal with it. It's not necessarily how people deal with it. I just think that everybody's just as great Mm, as us. Yeah, no. And I don't want to like downplay anyone Mm -hmm. else's great doings, but I'm like, look, just because you set that bar and that standard for you, that doesn't mean that's applicable to everyone else. You get one call to action over here. Yeah, we talked about customer service. Mm -hmm. You know, customer service is one of the greatest ways to stay in business. But also, we talked about is your business thriving, surviving, or dying? This, what we're talking about, goes hand in hand yeah. with that. Mm-hmm. Because a thriving business knows how to make their CTAs work for their customers. Yeah. They, really, they don't miss. It's the messaging. like The messaging slaps them in the face every time. Yeah, the messaging has a very streamlined point. But... When you see the constant evolution of the CTA to the constant evolution of the message, you have to wonder, does that mean that whatever this message and CTA is tied to is getting bigger, growing positively? Or is all of this evolution happening? Nothing being cleaned up or shaved off because of something negatively happening in the background. So are you just like, you know, you went from a streamlined something to a very hodgepodge mix of I was targeting this group. Now I'm just trying to get anybody that'll look. Does that make sense? Yeah, because what they say, oh, unlike Tupac, all eyes on me don't mean a good thing. <laughs> You know, shout out to her guy, Pac. You know? Really? Oh, you know him. Sounds like it. Or hey, knew him. Oh my God. Listen, if Pac was my friend, he my friend. I, I'm, I damn near, I lived through Pac damn near thirty years later. But you see how I just referenced it, right? Because it's the same way in business. Businesses want attention. What's the old adage? There's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. You know who said that? A rich white dude. <laughs> A liar. <laughs> Listen. A struggling small business owner has never said that anything is good. No, that's nah, not nah, no, 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 no. Anything is totally, not good. totally not <laughs> true. Yeah. And that's where you go to your call to action. Your call to actions have to focus on who you are looking for. And sometimes we get in a, I don't even, sometimes Ms. Ms. Parker don't even know about a lot of stuff. We get inundated with emails of asking people to, uh, us to be brand ambassadors for their stuff. And I told I tell people all the time, why am I promoting your stuff when I got my own? Right. Like no disrespect. Oh, absolutely. But not. the call to action for watch for the hook is watch for the hook first. Right. Yeah, second. Yeah, 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 yeah. The call to M T Parker LLC is that. Then everybody else second. The call in the real estate business is our property, then never everybody else second. Right. Absolutely. You have to understand. You can't sacrifice what you're working for no. to put somebody in front of you. No. That's a different call to action. And even what we talked about in the other episode, your professional. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Your professional done yeah. went up. Yeah. Then your small business done went down. Yeah. But you still need that professional to fund your small business. You do. You do. That's you, a, you know, that's our, that's a call to action to a lot of 
small businesses. You gotta keep that money coming in. Yeah, yeah. Some way, somehow. You gotta foot the bills. Because the bill will always You will not say that. Come <laughs> do. I'm dead serious. I don't know. Listen, any business owner, me and Miss Parker every month, she'd be like, I'm so sick of these bills. Boy. But like, what I tell her. Bill. I'm fucking tired of But what I tell her. As long as you doing something, as long as you on this earth, <laughs> the bill gonna always come due. I'm tired of them bills. And but you shouldn't have you shouldn't have as many call to actions <laughs> for one message as you have a bill. See, <laughs> that don't match. Took it from me. That don't match. Yeah, see, that's why I love her so much. She said that and stole it because if your bills and call to actions is the same number, mm -mm, either right. you got way too many bills or way too many little call to actions. <laughs> I don't know which one is better or worse. It is questionable. But yeah, Miss Park, I appreciate yes. you. And I'm gonna let you uh take us out on these uh the CTAs. You know, tell the tell the people just can't be out here just swinging that shit. Like noodles on a wall. I mean, a streamlined message notice i said streamline because i've seen some messaging that ain't streamlined at all or started out streamlined and um uh, eventually turned into like a line with like 25 streams <laughs> the, yeah to that line for the health educating it started with a hot spot didn't just spread everywhere oh yeah absolutely at the patient zero to like now like a whole county right Right, she then jumped up and grabbed about three states now. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But a streamlined message should have a streamlined call to action that follows that messaging. Good job next time.